delighted to be here. I'm not quite sure if you can hear me. Hear you quite well. Since I'm precisely doing nothing at the moment, I can't see how you can consider that you must do well. I've never been known to say nothing. I couldn't say something of value, and I'd much rather say nothing. This is most extraordinary. And then again, being dead is an extraordinary business, especially when you're talking to people on earth who are supposed to be alive and are very much dull and dim and dead in consequence. Extraordinary business is it. Seems to have been a great deal of interest in my works, they said. They precisely in consequence nothing of importance. Seems to be the general rule. Many people from this side invariably try to say a great deal and in consequence say very little. The simple reason that we're having to utilize this extraordinary method of communication, why they cannot invent something more congenial, more suitable, more successful, this I can't imagine. I suppose one must be grateful for mediums. It's a pity that mediums have to be human beings, because they're so difficult, so complex. Take this medium, for instance. If you would see this medium, as I do from this side of life, you'd realize what we have to contend with. That's all we can hear you quite well, friend. Friend, may we have your name? Why are you so concerned with my name, surely? What I say is far more important than my name. Yes, but you'd be surprised. My name got me into a great deal of trouble when I was on your side. Oh, never mind. Yes, it's very pleased to they ask who it is, and we sometimes we can't tell. You can tell them it's Colonel Bogey. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't think they really said. I don't know. Anyway, friends, very pleased to have you through. Anyway, I'm sure you're much more pleased to have me through than I am to come. Oh. At least, I guess to be more correct to say that I'm quite happy to come. But I certainly wish that you were much more congenial in trying to converse, to pass through to you my thoughts through this particular method of communication, which may or may not be successful according to whatever way you happen to view it. But from my point of view, it's the most irritating business. Here am I trying to talk intelligently to you. And I find this fluctuating thing that I had to use makes it practically an impossibility. When one writes, though one has the medium of the pen, there's nothing to bar you from clearly putting down on paper your thoughts. But when you have to use another human being to demonstrate that which you feel intensely within yourself, I find it extremely irritating, but how can another person be responsible for that which I want to convey to you with clarity and intelligence? No individual can ever act as an instrument in the true sense. I remember way back, centuries ago, now I must seem, if not to you, to me, when I used to try to get people to portray characters that I had created, and to say lines that I had given them, it used to sound often so strange to me, as if they were not my lines at all. Yet they were. The people very seldom seemed to have their proper intonation, very seldom seemed to be able to put the weight behind the right word, to convey the meaning behind the sentence, to give it authority and tone and colour. And very people were, no due respect, very poor mediums. 
same applies here, using a medium to communicate with you from the side of life. It's like using an actor on your side to try and use that person to impersonate, to give through, as it were, oneself or that which one has written in the case of my plays. Oh, very confusing. Oh, you might as well know. My name is Wild. After oh, Wild. Oh, I've read your books. I like it. Yes. How fortunate you are. Huh? Yes. I say how fortunate you are to have read my books. Yes, I have. Yes, yes. yes. oh, good gracious. I got two of your books. Yes, I'm a lady. Love your books. I suppose I should be highly flattered to know that you've read my books and well, you've actually I, got one or two, I, I, which I means that others suggest that you bought them, which is very nice to know. Not that I'm getting any of the royalties. No doubt you belong to a very good library. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you tell us some of your life on the outside now? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Well, I must admit it's a relief to be asked to discuss one's life over here in preference to one's life on earth. Because in any case, my life when on earth is pretty well known among the gossip mongers. <laughs> <laughs> if I would say to you that my life here is not un unlike my life on earth, you'd probably be very horrified. But it happens to be perfectly true. And I have no regrets about it whatsoever. I'm perfectly happy and perfectly contented. And I live a life of delicious sins. 